Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this numeric expression. And this is going to be extra fun because we're not going to be using our calculator. And anytime we're doing math, we need to be careful, but especially if you're going to be doing a lot of calculations without a calculator. Now, a lot of you are probably saying to yourself, why are you making me do this problem without a calculator? Well, listen, you could, you know, uh, get your calculator out and do all this number crunching, but there's going to be times, many times, uh, and places where one, you're not going to have your calculator or two, you will not be allowed to use your calculator on test quizzes, etc. So you need to, you know, really be comfortable doing arithmetic and doing a problem like this without your calculator, because really the big picture here is, do you understand some of the underlying principles? So we have powers, we have negative exponents, positive exponents, etc. So really, that's what the whole point of this problem is, is can you tie together all these concepts, skills and principles to actually generate an answer? Well, if you think you can do this, go ahead and pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. And then we're going to walk through this step by step uh, so you can see exactly how to do this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here's our problem. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at this eight right here, okay? So what is eight? Well, you wanna start thinking in terms of powers, okay? How can I express numbers like eight and 16? Because there's a clue here. I am working with powers, right? This two to the fifth. So you wanna always try to convert uh, numbers into a power if you can, especially when you're trying to simplify a numeric expression. So eight is the same thing as two times two times two, which is two cubed. Okay, so this is what eight is equal to. And that's pretty, you know, much hopefully kind of common knowledge for a lot of you out there. Like, oh, you see eight, and you're thinking maybe it's such like you see four. What's four equal to? Well, four is equal to two squared, right? So eight is equal to two cubed. So what I can do is I can rewrite this problem as not eight to the negative third power. I can write it as two cubed to the negative third power. And you're gonna see how this is gonna be very helpful, helpful to us in just one second. All right, so here we have 16, which of course is four times four, but 16 is what? Two times two times two times two, because I have eight as a power of two. I have a power uh, of two down here, right? Uh, this is a base of two. So you wanna always write um, you, uh, a number, a value in a common base that's being used in the problem, right? That's gonna be very, very helpful. So instead of four squared for 16, write it as two times two times two times two or two to the fourth power. Okay, so that is our 16 right there. And then let me go ahead and just kind of erase this stuff so we can kind of concentrate a little bit better on what's going on. All right, so here's 16. Uh, we're gonna write that as two to the fourth. Eight is the same thing as two cubed. And we're gonna take that to the negative third power in just one second. Now, I'm looking at this 40,000. I'm like, all right, I'm thinking in terms of powers of two. So I know like two squared is four. I'm like, you know what? I'm thinking, uh, you know, uh, two cubed, right? That's eight, uh, two to the fourth, that's 16. I'm like, well, can I just get a four out of this thing right here? Like a two squared? Yeah, you can write 40,000 as four times 10,000, all right? Now we'll come back to this in a second. And by the way, you could have taken a different path uh, to solve this problem and got the exact right answer. But I'm just kind of illustrating a, a point here. When you're working with particular powers and you have the same base showing up, try to express everything, everything you can in terms of that base, all right? All right, so then we have two to the fifth, so we'll put that down right there. All right, so now let's go ahead and take the next step. And the next step is this. 2 to the third power, this right here, to the negative third power, well, we need to know a property of exponents. That property is really this. A to the m is equal, a to the m to the n power is equal to a to the m times n. So when we're taking a power to a power, what we need to do is distribute or multiply that outside exponent to that inside exponent. So negative 3 times 3 is what? That's negative 9. So 2 cubed to the negative third power is 2 to the negative ninth power. 
All right, so we have this uh, taken care of, and then we had two to the fourth right there. And now four, as I was talking about, I'm gonna write things in powers of two, so that's pretty easy to do. Four is the same thing as two squared. And then we got our 10,000 here, and then we have our two to the fifth right there. Okay, so notice I'm just working the problem one step at a time. And again, you may have taken a couple different steps. It's perfectly fine. I'm kind of just really going nice and slow here so you can really understand what's going on. All right, now here, let's just notice this part of the problem. All these twos, we're multiplying all these powers of two. So if you were to multiply these two right here, okay, two to the fourth times two squared, how do you multiply powers with the same base? Well, we have a property of uh, powers and exponents. It looks like this, a to the m times a to the n, the same base here is a to the m plus n. That's basically a fancy way to say that if you have two to the fourth and we're multiplying by two squared, what we do is simply, we have the same base, two, so we add the exponents, so that would be two to the sixth. So in this particular case, I have two, 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 all these have the same base. So effectively, I just need to add all these exponents up. So what would that be? Well, this is going to be six, and I have a six plus a negative nine. And last time I checked, negative nine plus six is what? Negative three. So that's what that all right there is going to be equal to. So let's go and write that right now, okay? All right, so this is why we're doing this problem without a calculator, so that we can practice our understanding of working with powers and exponents. All right, so all of this now is two to the negative third power, and that's gonna be times 10,000 all over two to the fifth. So let's go ahead and take another step. All right, now at this point, we have a couple of different options here. Um, I can divide this by this, okay? Again, I'm working with powers of two. We wanna work with these powers as much as you possibly can. So you can divide, okay, uh, powers and exponents or powers uh, if the bases are the same. So this is one rule we can use. We can subtract exponents, but I have a better option here for us. Here I have a negative exponent. I can actually take this thing and I could put it down here, or I could put this two to the fifth up in the numerator. So we can do all sorts of different things. Now this particular problem, I'm not gonna be able to cover um, all the rules that you need to know. So the things that I'm highlighting here or touching upon, um, hopefully you're familiar with. If you are not, uh, you need to uh, review uh, properties of powers and exponents. So you might wanna check out probably like my Algebra One course in my Math Help program, uh, because this is super important in mathematics. But again, uh, what uh, the point I'm making here is we have options. I, some, uh, one student could be like, oh, I'll move this up here. Another student could be, oh, I'll move this down here. Another student might divide. It's perfectly fine because ultimately you're gonna get the right answer, okay? So that's the cool thing about uh, math is that you know you can take a couple different paths and still get to the same place. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this two to the negative third power down to the denominator. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so we have a property, again, a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the n. So uh, when you're working with negative exponents, all right, uh, basically what you can do, notice our power here is in the numerator. If I take this whole thing and I just pick it up and move it down into the denominator, and you can see that right there, what's gonna happen is the sign is gonna change. It's gonna go from negative to positive. It's as simple as that. So let me just make this uh, uh, very clear to you. If I wanted to move this two to the fifth up into, it's right now, it's currently in the denominator. If I wanted to move it up into the numerator, I certainly can, uh, but what would need to uh, change? Well, that's a terrible two to the fifth. I could do better than that. Two to the fifth. Well, what's gonna change is that this is positive down here in, in the denominator. So I'm gonna put the opposite sign. So this would be two to the negative fifth up in the numerator, right? So then I can take this two to the negative third times this two to the negative fifth. I can kind of go that route as well. So again, you have options, but this is another property you need to know. But uh, for me, I'm gonna be like, yeah, let me move this down, down into the denominator. So there you go. All right, so we have 10,000 over two cubed uh, times that two to the, uh, the fifth power. All right, so now 
same base, uh, and we're talking about multiplication, so that's going to be pretty easy. And what do I need to do? I need to simply now add the exponents, right? So I have two, uh, two, uh, 2 to the third power times 2 to the fifth power. So the final result is going to be what? 3 plus 5 is 8. So that's going to be 2 to the eighth. So we're getting pretty close here, right? So we have 10,000 over 2 to the eighth power. But I know that there's powers of 2 in here, right? It's pretty easy. First of all, I can write... Uh, 10,000 is what, two times 5,000. But we know we have some uh, more powers of two in here. Like, oh, well, 5,000, divide that by two. That's going to be two times two times what, 2,500, right? So two times 2,500 is 5,000. So now I have a two squared, right, right here. So the, the key um, is you want to be thinking to yourself, what's the highest powers of two you can divide into 10,000. I could certainly divide two. I could divide four, because four times 2,500 um, is uh, 10,000. So you keep kind of playing around with that, and ultimately, okay, and not with too much more difficulty, you'll see that you can divide 16 into 10,000. So 16 times uh, 625 is 10,000, and 16, of course, is what? Two to the fourth power. All right, that's 2 to the 4th power, 2 times 2 times 2. So you want to get the largest power of uh, 2 as we possibly can because we have this 2 to the 8th down here. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this is uh, going now. So we have 16 times 625. We know 16 is the same thing as 2 to the 4th times 625 over this uh, 2 to the 8th power. Again, at this point, we have options, okay? How am I going to address this? Well, what I'm going to do is I take this 2 to the 4th and put it down again in the denominator. So that's going to give me 2 to the negative 4th. Remember, the sign is going to change. It's positive up here, so it's going to be negative down here. Okay. So we have 625, uh, 2 to the negative 4th times 2 to the 8th. So how do I deal with this? Again, multiplication, same base. So I simply have to add the exponents, all right? So when I add the exponents, negative 4 plus 8, I get a positive 4. So 2 to the 4th is what? Well, that is 16. And now we have 625. Now right here, okay, uh, if you just test or uh, that, you know, 625, it ends with the 5. It's not going to be divisible by 2. And uh, it's not going to be divisible by 4 or 8 or 16 because we would have found that factor in 10,000. So this is a fully simplified fraction. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in basic math, check out these two courses right here. So the first is my Math Foundations course. This is a, a quick review of basic math. Now, if you want to review uh, basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'm going to leave uh, links to both of these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.